Welcome to Enrollment on Demand. In this tutorial, we will learn about quick and easy enrollment revalidations with PECOS. These step-by-step -step instructions will help reduce delays in application processing. The information given in this training is correct as of today. The most current information contained in this presentation can be found on the Noridian Medicare website and the CMS website at the links listed on this slide. Every enrollment goes through revalidation at some point. The fastest way to complete this is to use PECOS. PECOS has a much faster processing time than by submitting the 855 by paper as data currently on record can be quickly reviewed. Only those sections requiring changes need to be completed. Signatures can quickly be obtained and more. Where with paper, an entire application must be completed. PECOS shows all the enrollments that you currently work for or if you are a group member. This allows an entire record to be reviewed at once and the ability to see all reassignments for the individuals. Individuals can also terminate reassignments for those no longer valid. If you own a group, are a sole proprietor or a sole owner, you will also be able to complete the EFT information on the application. Now I know what you are thinking, but nothing is changing. If you are completing an application through PECOS, the EFT information will need to be reviewed. If the information is correct, that section is done. If their information is not correct or left blank, it will need to be filled out. With the supporting documentation, PECOS stores the downloaded information originally submitted. You will not have to send it in separately. Just review the information on the documentation for any paperwork which may need to be updated. PECOS will also show you if there are any errors on the application for most topics. There are a couple ways that you can start a revalidation application after logging into PECOS. One, navigate to the Revalidation Notification Center or two, navigate to My Associates. When beginning through the Validation Notification Center, you will be redirected to this screen. Any enrollment records which need to be revalidated will appear on this screen. There is an option to filter based upon different types of enrollment records, then narrowing down the information even further by adding in a provider's name or organization's name. Once an application questionnaire is completed, a confirmation page will display and the application can be started. The second access option is to go into the enrollment directly through My Associates. Select My Associates. Under My Associates, select the organization or individual who has an enrollment record that is needing a revalidation. If there are multiple enrollments per legal business name and tax ID, Use the PTAN and specialty to select the specific enrollment to revalidate. If choosing more options, additional questions may be completed. If selecting the Revalidate button, PECOS will immediately create a revalidation application. If working on the individual provider, you will see all reassignment of benefits listed. This route is the fastest after selecting the correct enrollment to revalidate. Select the Revalidate button. A confirmation page appears where you can start the application. This opens directly to Fast Track View. The Fast Track View will allow you to view each section of the enrollment record. If you need to make a change to the information, click on the Go To Topic button and you may edit, add, or delete information. Using Fast Track, scan through the topics. Things to look for are documents to expire and need to be replaced. Review those on file and replace any expired or missing documentation. Some of the documents to replace might be accreditations, licenses, CLIA, FDA, etc. Missing might be a voided check or bank letter, an IRS document or others that you believe should be on file. 
make sure the most current information is on the enrollment record and supporting documents are uploaded. Review the topics on the enrollment to be sure the information matches the documentation. Correct addresses are important on the enrollment. They tell CMS where to send notices or questions. They should be ones where CMS or Neridian can reach out to and receive a needed response. The correspondence address is this one where notices such as revalidation notices can be sent. Medical review correspondence address. If a medical review is required, is this address that can be used to obtain medical records and information? Practice locations. Is this an accurate open address? Does the phone number provided reach that address? Special pay too. Is this where remittance notices or other payment information can go? Contact. Is the contact information up to date? Are addresses, phone numbers, emails, and other information correct? Are all addresses in a USPS format with accepted abbreviations and a plus four so they easily verify with USPS? PECOS verifies the addresses against what USPS has. Zip codes track directly to claims for payment, so it's really important to report accurately. Address accuracy is important. For example, Medical Review has told us how they have been unable to obtain additional information when an appeal is submitted. This results in potential for those appeals to be denied. For you, the provider, this can mean financial losses, and no one wants that to occur. For those suppliers that can have multiple locations on a record, are your locations listed and up to date? Do you need to remove duplicates or add locations? Are all your locations operational? Does the phone number actually reach that location? Many times we see billing issues due to a location not being added or a site visit issue due to it not being operational. Keep the locations current to avoid issues and to stay in compliance. Recently we encountered a supplier with billing issues due to a location being entered multiple times and additional PTANs being issued. Take time to clean up the enrollment. Avoid issues like this supplier has. When reviewing the ownership and managerial sections, verify all entities listed have the correct roles. Multiple roles can be chosen for each one. For individuals, choose all that apply. Board members are to be listed as directors. Officers are those who have roles such as CEO, CFO, COO, board president or chairman, vice board president or chairman, CEO, CFO, COO typically have additional roles for managerial functions they perform. If adding new entities and individuals, watch that dates and social security or tax IDs are accurate. It's easy to transpose a number or enter today's date instead of the birth date or role date. If there is a chain home office and administrator, they need to be listed in these sections and in the chain home office section. The application is almost completed. Only a few more things to review. If your entity has a billing agency, are they listed on the enrollment? Is the information accurate? How about contacts? Are all listed that should be? Are there any to remove or update information on? Do you need to add anyone? Are there authorized and delegated officials valid and listed in the ownership managerial section? Is everyone listed that should be? How about the EFT? Is all the financial information accurate? Avoid payment issues by verifying all information is correct. If needing to update, submit a voided check or bank letter along with the changes. If all is correct, no changes are required. Individuals need to review licenses and certificates. Are the accompanying documents current? Individual providers are also responsible to review their records and verify that all the reassignments are up to date. So owners will revalidate both their individual and group enrollments at the same time, even if only receiving notice on one being up for revalidation. 
sole proprietors that work for themselves and also have reassignments to others will revalidate all reassignments and their sole proprietorship. The application is almost completed. Switch to the error and warning tab to check for errors. Make any required corrections. Only errors are required to be corrected. Warnings are optional. Once those are completed, submit the application. To complete the application, click Begin Submission. Authorized and delegated official signatures may be e-signed or uploaded. E-sign is the easiest and fastest. It can be completed wherever a signer is at. The authorized or delegated official will receive an email signing request for e-sign. It is a good practice to reach out to any signers and let them know the application was submitted and to watch for the email. The revalidation application has now been submitted for review. Work with the processing representative if any corrections are required to complete the revalidation quickly. Once an approval notification is received, the revalidation process is complete. To keep future revalidations easy and to stay in compliance, report any changes as they occur. Thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. Continue your learning experience by referring to additional recordings available on the Noridian website or YouTube channel.